guys, this is Eric Louvier here, and I have a really great guest on the call today. Someone I've admired and respected, and lots of other people in the marketplace in the community really respect my guest today. I mean, his name pops up all the time, and that is Justin Brooks. So Justin Brooks is on the call. Hey, Justin, how are you doing, my man? Is everything going well over there? I'm good, man. Life is good for us right now. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. It's always good to talk to you again. I know we've touched base a few times. You came out to Austin a few times. So it's it's always good to touch base with you and, and hear what you have to say about traffic and business. And you just, you're just a wealth of information. So it's a pleasure to have you on board. So let's go ahead and just, you know, take a few minutes and, you know, sort of tell the listeners, you know, about Justin Brook, your, your story of like maybe where you came from and how you got here to this powerhouse you are now. Like tell us a little bit about your, your journey, Justin. Sure, sure. I'll try and save people and, and, and tell them the quick version of it. But in 2007, I landed an internship with Russell Brunson. This is long before the ClickFunnels days. And my job as an intern was to go through this quarter million dollar marketing library he had full of just every seminar recording and DVD course, home study courses, books, magazines, I mean, everything. And so my job was to go through these things and write affiliate review articles. So I had to first go through go through the material enough to be able to write a review. And that way he could kind of make his money back on, on this gigantic investment. I mean, it was it was an entire walking closet full of, of courses. Got, and so I got the education of a lifetime doing this. I got to learn from Joe Polish, Chet Holmes, Stephen Pierce, Jay Abraham, Dan Kennedy. I mean, it just goes on and on. Every name you could possibly think of was in there. And uh, and so I got the education of a lifetime. And the thing that really kind of stuck out to me was this one course about Google ads and how you could kind of pay per click. I mean, my whole life, I always thought of advertising as something you had to spend a lot of money on, you know, like $10,000 to get a commercial or a you know, $5,000 to get a billboard or something. like. And then it was like, it had, you know, you had to, you know, was, you'd be lucky if it worked, you know? So it was like a risky investment. That's how I, I thought of it growing up. But, you know, this Google ads course made it seem so real. And so when I got home from my internship, I told my girlfriend, who's now my wife, I, uh, I said, hey, I want to do this Google ad stuff that I learned. I think it'll really work. I, I learned a lot of my internship. And she said, that's great, but we don't have money. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, we, after a lot of talking and I, li- and I literally she made me write up like a three page report on how I would how I would use this. And it was for 60 bucks. You know? <laughs> I had to write a three page report to my girlfriend on how I was going to do wow. this. Um, she was a teacher at the time. So of, of course she made me write a report. Um, so anyways, we, we just finally talked about, we we're going to pay half the electric bill. This is how sure I was going to work. This was going to work. I paid half the electric bill and I took $60 from there and I put it on this pathetic $2 a day Google ad campaign, watched it like a hawk. And, you know, because of what I learned, because of the education that I got in my internship, I was able to double my money, which was only 150 bucks. But, I, you know, took that 150 bucks, paid the electric bill, put the rest of it back into the account. Now I'm free and clear all the money that I get. And I doubled again and again and again and again, 11 months in a row. You can do the math yourself. I had a, a six figure income. So I literally took $60 and turned it into six figures. But I can't even use that headline in ad campaigns because it's it's non-compliant. Even though it's the truth, <laughs> uh, I would get shut down if I ever used that yeah. headline. Um, so yeah, that's my story. You know, that's what you know. It, it was that it was paid ads. It was those Google ads way back then that that made me that changed my life. It's the thing that took me from eating ramen noodles to Red Lobster. You know, so it became the thing that I obsessed about. You know, it's like. There have been times when there's, you know, advertising magazines in the in the bathroom and I listen to podcasts about it in the car. It's, a, <laughs> it's the thing that changed my life and, you know, it puts food on the table for my kids. And um, and I just really dig it, man. Yeah, you know, I really love it. And so I'm obsessed with it. And that's what I've done. You know, over the years, uh, I've, you know, had a great career because I've done well with paid advertising. I've landed Dan Kennedy and Russell Brunson and 
the Agoras. I mean, I've landed the biggest names in the business as my clients. I no longer have clients. Now I'm looking, you know, I like what I'm Jones about is building a platform, helping the next round of people land the Dan Kennedys and the Agoras and helping those guys have the success that I've had. Wow. So that's how that advertising gravy train started. I, I always wondered how, how you got into it and, you know, got mm-hmm. into the advertising and everything. You know, what's also interesting about your story, you know, you mentioned the electric bill. Like I, I, I go back in time and it's kind of how that happened for me too with advertising. I had, I, I remember getting a bonus from my job, my day job. It was like $2,500 or something like that. And I took it to AdWords. This was like 2005, 2004, something like that. I took it to AdWords and I just blew it all. Oh, and no. my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, she was so upset, you know, cause we were going to use that money for other things. And then I made it a mission at that point that I was going to make sure the next time I spent any dollar on advertising that I really knew what I was doing. So I went and started studying courses and buying books and everything I could find on AdWords and traffic and paid advertising. And that's when my life. So the next time I ran ads, I, I did it like you. I started really small, you know, just a five, ten dollars a day and, and grew it from there. So that it's really awesome how we can look back at those moments where we remember like the electric bill or the bonus <laughs> I got, you know, it's, it's, it's right. interesting. Like all these years and all the ups and downs and success, we remember those types of things. Well, that, that's an amazing story. So I know I'm always really interested with you as far as the YouTube ads. I mean, I, it's just, it's such a huge, it's just a huge platform. It's such a huge, everyone's on YouTube. It's like the learning mm-hmm. platform. I think it's like the second or third largest search engine on the planet. It's got Google and YouTube. And, and, and so I'm intrigued by YouTube ads. And I'm always kind of looking to you for that kind of advice. What, what is like, you, you, let's talk about how to get like thousands of webinar attendees using YouTube ads and, and just go for it on that. So could you help us with that? Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing you got to understand is, uh, the, the biggest difference between YouTube and Facebook is the level of intent, is the is the, the mind frame that the person is in. When someone goes to Facebook, I would say now, today, like now that Facebook is really mature, sometimes you're going there to learn something. Just because there's so many groups now, uh, they now have Facebook Watch and Facebook Live. So they, they've adopted things that have higher intent. But traditionally, when you go to Facebook, you're, you're in a much more casual frame of mind. You're in kind of a discovery frame of mind. You're, you, you're looking up articles. You're talking with friends. You're looking up memes and stuff like that. You're just kind of browsing through your thing where, where YouTube is usually a little bit more active. You're, you're going there to look up something. You're going there to learn something most of the time, you know, I think, I think 50% of the time we're going there to watch something funny. And then the other 50% of the time we're going there to learn how do we change a switch or how do we change a tire or how do we, you know, run a webinar or whatever, you know? And so there's, there's more intent behind the traffic uh, when it comes to to YouTube. Uh, There's also a lot more inventory because Facebook really they, and they've grown it, but really their only uh, source of inventory, when I say inventory, I mean room to show ads. Um, and how many ads can they show? It's, it's the news feed. And this is why they've created stories and groups. And you know now they're advertising in Messenger. Now they're advertising in Facebook Marketplace. And they're constantly looking for ways to create more inventory. Well, with YouTube, there's something like, I forget the exact number. Uh, somebody else can look it up or whatever. But um, it's something like 400 minutes of new video added every minute. So it's like this infinitely growing catalog of inventory that you can advertise on instead of like one news feed where they can only put so many ads per organic post. Otherwise, it just becomes all ads and then they you know, make their visitors mad and everybody leaves. That's what happened to MySpace. Mm-hmm. It, you know, MySpace, they didn't watch that and it became just one giant spammy website. And uh so that's the that's those are kind of the biggest differences is there's a lot more scale 
when it comes to YouTube. And because there's so much more inventory, they're able to charge less. It's, it's not that the, you know, like it's devalued or anything like that. It's just because they have more to sell, they can charge less. Where Facebook, they have less to sell. And so they have to charge more, especially in Q4, which is coming up here with everybody's going to start spending for the holidays. And so that's one of the things. Uh, the next thing you got to understand is people's um, learning modalities. I'm not going to get all geeky, but this stuff really exists. You can Google it. Uh, there are studies about this stuff. And, um, you know, basically readers like to read, watchers like to watch, listeners like to listen. There are people that just gravitate to podcasts, people that gravitate to video, people that gravitate to books. Everybody has their own kind of learning modality that they really enjoy. Well, if you're going to have a webinar, doesn't it kind of make sense to appeal to the learning modality of people who like videos as their learning modality? It's just a, it's just a match. You know, it's like these people are going to this video site to learn about a topic and you can now show your webinar advertisement to these people saying, Hey, if you're, if you're the type of person who likes to watch educational videos, I've got an hour long educational video. Hmm. You know, it, it's just a better match, you know, whereas Facebook, it, it, it can be a little bit of um, it's a big commitment for, for somebody that's just kind of browsing their feed. It's like, I got to sign up. I got to remember the date. I got to show up. I got to stay there and listen to the whole thing. And then I got to buy. You know, there's like so many commitments within that thing where somebody, you know, the, the model that I like, and I actually learned this, I was a, I was a guest speaker at a real estate seminar. Just, you know, the real estate guys tend to like me because they're all into advertising. And so I got to go to this real, you know, mega real estate. I mean, these are the biggest guys, you know, in real estate are there and, and they wanted me to talk about ads so that they could learn how to, you know, get more real estate leads and stuff. And uh, I kept noticing that they were filling their webinars with YouTube videos. I was like, wow, I haven't seen anybody in my space really talk about that. And so what they were doing is they were just basically creating like a, a one small tip. And then, you know, at the end of it saying, if you like that tip, I'm, I'm about to have a webinar on Thursday where I'm going to go in depth on that. I'm going to talk about this, 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 and this. And I was like, man, that's, that's really interesting. That sounds like it would work. So I started using it in my own stuff. Then I started passing it on to each of my clients. I was like, Hey, so I have myself and it's working. Can we try it out with you? And I did it with another client. Then I went to another client. I was like, Hey, you know, this stuff has been really working and it passed on through like my whole client list and it just kept working and working. And, um, and that's when I started digging in and I learned about the learning modalities and the intent. I started figuring out, like, why does this work? And that's when I reverse engineered it. But essentially, the way it works is you're going to create a, a, a one quick tip, just one cool thing. OK, so if your webinar is, you know, what's uh, what's one of your webinar topics, Eric? What's a webinar topic you've ever run? Um, how to get leads from LinkedIn and high, high ticket clients, you know, coaching clients. Okay, perfect. Okay. So you got this webinar about LinkedIn lead gen. And so you're going to create one, you know, three to five minute video that is, you know, no, this is, here's the thing. You don't want to turn on, we all have that pitchman voice, right? That kind of carnival bar webinar voice, you might even say. Uh, you don't want to go into that. You want to you want to use your casual, friendly talking voice, just as I am right here. You know, it's you want it to look, you don't want it to look like an ad. You want it to look like, you know, is, is you standing in front of a whiteboard or in front of a chart and like you're just going to teach something. Uh, you know, I, say whatever you want about Ty Lopez. He tends to be really good at this style video. So if you want to look at an example, um, I, I'm not condoning anything. I'm not endorsing anything. He just tends to be good at this style of video. Uh, also, Frank Kern's been doing it lately on his uh, show called The Lead Magnet. And uh, I've seen Cardone do it. Like it's, it's just standing in front of a whiteboard or a chart and you're kind of drawing something out. You know, just one, one tip, you know, one idea. And what happens is, that people get a piece of value and they're like, wow, that was, that was good. That was exactly what I was looking for. And we'll talk about how to connect it to what they were already looking for here in a second. 
So they get this piece of value, and it's like the it's like how you know cookies are sold or bagels are sold. You, know, you go to the grocery store, and and they don't try and like there's no like carnival barker there trying to sell you a box of cookies. No, they give you a, they give you a free cookie. You eat it, you're like, oh my god, that's delicious. Can I buy a box? And we're like, oh yeah, they're over on aisle three. You know, and, and so that's the same kind of process we're doing here. We're giving them a delicious cookie. And then they're like, man, I want more of that. So you tell them, well, on Thursday or every night at seven or whatever your, your webinar is, you just kind of connect the dots for them. So this one cool tip video, very casual, just you standing in front of a whiteboard. If you want to step it up a little bit on your whiteboard, you can have like a couple pieces of paper and, you know, one, you know, and, and mark them like one, two, three. So there's like three tips you're going to show them and you're going to kind of reveal you know, and that just helps them, you know, the stick rate a little bit, you know, make it a little bit more exciting. You don't have to get all fancy, but if you want a fancy idea on how you could do it a little bit better, that tends to work. Um, and it could be anything. You could be, you know, pieces of paper or you've got something, you know, cans blocking it, whatever. You just make it a little exciting. Okay. <laughs> so three to five minute video. At the end of the video, you're going to say, if you really like this, uh, we're going to go in depth on it, you know, Thursday night or, you know, every night at 7 p.m. We've got this free web class. Uh, and, and just link them to it. Now, here's the thing. You want to link it to a, a few different ways because the one thing YouTube is not great at is clicking. Facebook is really good because, like, you could just click. You know, you're scrolling and you click right then and there. Well, sometimes, you know, like me, I watch a lot of my YouTube through my Xbox or my PlayStation. And so whenever somebody's like, oh, yeah, just click up here, click over there. You know, my kids, they hate this joke. I always go over to the TV and I'm like, look, guys, I can't click. I can't click. You know, I'm so tired of that joke. I've said it probably 10,000 times. Um, so you got to remember, like, they've done a great job. If, if you're on YouTube with your laptop or your phone, they've done a great job of making it clickable there. However, you never know where somebody's watching YouTube. It could be on a tablet, their phone. You know, you don't know where they are watching it. So you want to have it in a few different places, okay? The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure it's in, like, the bottom thirds. You know, a lot of people put their, their name. Like, if you ever watch news, you know, it shows up. This is Joe Schmo from WCNBC or whatever. You know, that's the bottom thirds. You want to have a little uh, domain name, make it very easy, you know? So it could be, you know, like we're using go to webinar right now. So it could be like go to webinar.com forward slash go or forward slash join. You know, for me, uh, my website's ad skills. So I'll do like ad skills.com forward slash tour, or, you know, something, something very simple, short, very memorable. Okay. And that's going to be down at the bottom. That way they can, if they can't click anywhere, they can use their phone and, and just type it in. Okay. That's the first one. Second one, take advantage of everything that they're using. You know, they have, cards and they have clickable things like there's a whole bunch of stuff on the screen that when you're uploading your video they, they give you all those options you know you can have these clickable areas on the actual video so take care take advantage of all those normal things make sure you have the the domain name the little uh, link in the um bottom thirds and then in the description almost it's every almost every youtuber when they have a link, they're always saying links in the description, links in the description, links in the description. I think we all know now if ever there's going to be a link mentioned in a YouTube video, it's probably going to be in the description, <laughs> you know. So uh, and even if they don't say links in the description, we go looking for, you know, what links are in there. So um, make sure you have a link in the description. So if you cover those areas, you're going to do great. You know, you're going to get a lot of traffic from this. But you do need to make sure you have those redundancies built into the video that's, last that's, thing you know, that, that's yeah. fantastic you know just real quick the you know i'm taking notes over here the i mean you know when you talk about youtube with the intent and the learning i mean that that is so true like when i'm on facebook i'm kind of just reacting i'm just kind of just there like in line at the bank or i'm like at a stoplight or I'm like, you know, like right. it, it's like a very reactive place where I'm just showing up, kind of scrolling around, clicking around. I don't really have any intent, but when I go to YouTube, I mean, I'm going there for a reason, you know, I have an right. intent and that, and that is, and, and also with the learning modalities, I thought about myself, you know, I, I like, I, I like audio, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what I like. I like audio. I like to learn from audio. I listen to audio books more than I read them. And, but you know, the thing about YouTube is like, I use YouTube all alone as audio. 
I'm not watching mm. my phone, right? But I'm listening to YouTube. Like if I'm, when I'm working out, like a lot of times I go to YouTube, find something interesting, you know, something to learn. I'm just constantly learning. And right. like I have my headphones on and I'm just, I'm, I'm not watching the video. I'm listening to the, to the video. So that, that really appeals to, you know, both learning modalities, the video watching and the, and the listening, but yeah, really good stuff. I mean, I love, I love the whole process of the, you know, three to five minute video with some, with a good tip. And then, you know, if you'd like more of this uh, every Thursday at 6 PM, we do our, you know, blank, blank call. So show up there and, you know, click the link below in the description or at the end of this video, there'll be a link click there and go over there and register for those calls and you'll get a lot more where this came from. That is really awesome. And, and also, you know, for the listeners out there, this is Justin Brook and you can get a lot more about him by going to adskills.com. That's his main flagship program right there. And of course, if you Google him, I know we talked before, you got so much free stuff all over the place on Google by just Googling Justin Brook, J-U-S-T-I-N, last name Brook. B R O O K E, and again, his site is adskills.com. So carry on, Justin. Man, I'm taking notes. I'm loving this. Let's, let's roll. Absolutely. Hey, one other bonus thing if you want to add to your video, like, or if you want us to text you a reminder when the webinar is starting, send a text to 43444 or whatever. You know, I don't know, whatever service you want to use. There's a lot of services out there, but you can use one of those text messaging services and then be able to send out text reminders. And uh, Eric, I know you're, you're a fan of those. I got a few for our podcast. Um, and and we, we all know that those work really, really well. So that's another way. And that's the biggest thing I could stress to you when it comes to YouTube. It's, it's really, really good. But you have to work hard at making sure you have good call to actions that can transfer them over. Because it's very much like TV. You know, sometimes people will talk about a product on TV. But then a lot of times you have to go Google that product to be able to know like what it was, you know. So just just think about that, okay? Um, but if you if you do those things, if you you know that I've talked about, you will do phenomenal because almost nobody's doing them. You know, they're just like, oh, go to whatever whatever.com and they don't have all the other things. So if you do all the things that I told you about, the bottom thirds, the click uh, click things in the video, the link in the description throw on the text message reminder, you're going to do great. Okay. So now the last thing you got to do is you got to connect it to the right intent because we don't want to just show YouTube ads to anyone. You know, where a lot of people go wrong is just because YouTube ads is within the Google ads umbrella. So like, where do you go to start a YouTube ad? You go to Google ads. You know, I think it's ads.google.com. Um, I don't know. I've been doing it 15 years. I still <laughs> Google. I just go to Google. I type in Google ads. And Google AdWords. <laughs> yeah, the first link that comes up, you know, I probably should have made a bookmark, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, you, you go you're going to go into Google ads and because it's within Google ads, people tend to think in keywords. That's how most Google ads work. They work on keywords. However, if you were to set this up with keywords, you might have some success. But YouTube, they don't think about keywords the same way they do in their in their normal search. Like if you were to bid on the keyword hydroponic tomato growing in Google, then when somebody types in hydroponic tomato growing, your ads are going to show up. Well, in YouTube, they're much more loose with uh, what they think the person is searching. So you might show up for, you know, gardening or you know tomato gardening or upside down tomato growing you know like so you know you have to you know, there's a certain way that I want you to, to go about this okay and so what I like to do is I like to bid on channels I like to target channels so instead of a video now here's what some people do they go like they've, they've heard a little bit of success and they will start looking for very specific videos and uh, so the way you can target in YouTube ads is you can either use a URL, so like a link to the video, or you can use a keyword. I'm telling you, save keywords for later. They're good, but it's a different strategy, okay? I'm telling you to go for the URLs. You want to collect URLs. And when people hear that, they, they start thinking, oh, okay, well, I'll go and grab specific videos. Well... That's a good idea if you're catching that video right as it starts 
but if you're catching that video after it's been out for a while, then, then the amount of people watching it has really gone down. You know, it's an old video. It's not really getting many daily visitors. So, and there's a way to kind of like watch it over a few days and count how many views it went up from Monday to Tuesday, but that gets crazy, right? It's too hard. I don't like working hard. So instead, you can actually, you know, a channel has a URL as well. Like just like a, a YouTube video has a shareable URL that you can send to your buddy or whatever, a channel has a shareable URL and you can use that. You can target the whole channel. That's way better. You know, That's awesome. so, yeah. So when I was for one client, we were running like these, um, you know, these like back with Obama and look, I'm not, I'm not getting political, but like this client, he had an anti Obama thing. And so what channel did I target? I targeted the White House channel. So <laughs> anybody, anybody who was going to uh, any of the videos made by the actual White House was seeing these anti-Obama ads. And wow. Whatever. Um, but that's the power. You know, like you could go to all your competitors and grab all their channels and you could be showing your video and they, there's no, you don't have to ask permission or anything like that. You know, they, it's just, just how the functionality of YouTube works. So you're talking about the YouTube URL for their specific channels. Yes. Yeah. You go to like, you know, type in any channel. Like if you, if you were to go to of any video and then right underneath the video, there's usually a little like icon for their channel. So mm -hmm. click on that. And now their channel URL is going to be up in the browser bar. Okay. That's what you want to use. You want to save a bunch of those. And then, you know, in YouTube or yeah, in the YouTube ads interface, when it asks you what you want to target, you're going to say URLs. And you're going to put all those URLs in there. Wow. That's what's going to make your videos. That's what's going to connect you to that intent because all the people that are watching those channels, they have the intent. They're going to those videos to learn whatever like if you were selling you know technology install videos you would want to target the best buy youtube channel mm. or the linus tech tips or the marcus brownlee you know tech reviews or whatever uh sorry if i just botched their names but yeah that, that's, <laughs> that's the whole that's brilliant system you target the channels and that's going to allow you that means every time they create a new video your ads are going to start showing up on there. So you're going to take advantage of their old videos, their new videos, and really just start storming and their the subscribers. Yes. Because their subscribers are seeing all those videos. It's very niche specific. If that YouTube channel is very niche specific, that, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's brilliant. I never, I never really thought of it for the URLs because I'm, I'm used to thinking keywords when it comes to Google. So you're, you're a hundred percent. That's huge. It is. It is huge, man. When you start adding these little things, one more pro tip um, after you start getting some views. So um, I would say after about a thousand views uh, on your ad, uh, which is your, your, your one quick tip video, they had, they start building an audience for you. Like in Facebook, everybody already kind of knows about custom audiences and lookalike audiences. Um, and you have to go kind of build that yourself. You have to like upload a list or whatever, or you have to put your pixels somewhere. Well, Google automatically starts building you a lookalike off of all your viewers. So if you want people, it's called a similar to audience. And so if you want people that are similar to people who watch these videos, you can extend there. So it is just so many ways to scale this out. Hmm. That, that is, that is, that is brilliant, man. I'm, I'm still just stuck on the URLs. Like I'm just like all these people <laughs> are popping in my head of who I could target there. That's, that's awesome. This is, by the way, guys, this is Justin Brooke. You can go follow him at adskills.com, which is a flagship staple in our community. So if you haven't been there, you need to go there, adskills.com. Justin Brooke, thanks so much for being here. Anything else to share with us on YouTube? Just like to recap real quick, you know, okay. and then we can move on to the next question. But, you know, look, you're going to create a one quick tip video. Uh, just you standing in front of a whiteboard or a chart. Keep it simple. Don't turn on your carnival barker voice. You know, just, you know, you're just giving a valuable thing. Remember, you're giving them a delicious cookie that's going to make them want to come to your webinar, which is buying the whole box. Okay. 
And then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you use all the call to action opportunities. You're going to have the bottom thirds. You're going to have the link in the description. You're going to use the website cards and all the little things that they give you to let the video be clicky. And then if you really want to have success, add in that text message reminder, send a text to whatever to get a reminder of it. And then lastly, to connect it to the right intent to make sure it's targeted traffic to your webinar. You want to make sure you're advertising on channel URLs, and that's going to help you connect to the right audience that's going to see your, your, your one delicious tip video and then you'll want to get on your webinar. Yeah, it's a good model, man. It works really, really well. Yeah, it is obviously a good model. I mean, this really is jumping out to me. I, I can't wait to go implement this right away. So, look, I have a really good, like, personal question I'd like to ask you here in a second. Sure. But what, what, before I ask you that question, um, and we'll wrap up then after I ask that question, you can answer it. Um, look, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about ad, ad skills in, in your program sure. there? Yeah, so what I wanted to do, our, our kind of mission is we want to connect good advertisers to good businesses. And I believe both sides have been being a little naughty, you know, okay? So some businesses, they don't have good funnels. And so they're hiring advertisers, and then they're expecting the advertiser to create a miracle. You know, like they have a me too offer that's no good or they have a, you know, they haven't done the work to split test their funnel to make sure it's actually capable of driving sales. And then they hire a media buyer and thinking the media buyer is going to create a miracle. Um, you know, we as ad buyers cannot make a turd not be a turd. OK, <laughs> so if your offer is not working, we cannot make it work with traffic. OK, you have to first. Thing. So there's that side. So I want to connect to good businesses. And then the same thing. Look, the advertisers are not in, innocent in this either. Some of the advertisers are stretching their level of experience just because that's what they're, you know, that's what's being sold on some of these sales pages these days. And so some guys are charging five thousand dollars a month when maybe they need to be putting in their dues a little bit. So we try to make sure we have legitimate, certified, trained up people, and we give them practice accounts, and we have hands-on mentoring, and we give them, you know, our test was made by an actual professor. Um, you know, it's over 100 questions. So we try to make sure we have actual, legitimate, good advertisers connecting with good businesses that have actual, good, legitimate funnels. That's what we're you know, all about doing that's a problem. You know, I'm not going to clean the oceans. I'm not going to clean the beaches or save the sea turtles, but that's the problem in the world that I can solve. And I'm really, really good at solving that problem. So that's what ad skills yeah. is all about. You can either hire our guys, or if you want to get better, you know, you can come into our training and get better, get a certification and learn the real stuff. There you go. Yeah. And I can contest that Justin Brook does definitely know his stuff when it comes to this field. So adskills.com, do your favor and go over there. So this, let's wrap it up with this question. I, I know that you talk, talked a little bit about your story with the electric bill and, you know, your girlfriend who's now your wife and you guys, you know, made it to the you know top of the community. You guys are doing tremendous, doing great for yourself. So there's a lot of people that are out there, you know, as entrepreneurs and, you know, they're, they're, they're getting into business or getting into the guts of doing business as an entrepreneur. And there's lots of ups and downs, as we both know, a lot of tough times and struggles. What would you say, Justin, is, you know, something that comes to mind for you and your experience that you would say is key to just being happy in business, despite all those ups and downs and tough times and struggles? And do, do you have any advice to give the listeners on, you know, just your feelings on, how to remain or be happy in business despite all those ups and downs? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, I would say that all my, my, my unhappiest times, my darkest day, I've been doing this 15 years now, and my, my darkest days, I would say they all centered around thinking too much about the future. I, I guess, you know, I guess it all comes down to like living in the now, but, that's kind of like, it feels too quotey. It's like, what does that actually mean? And, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, whenever I was comparing myself to others or when I was thinking about the destination, you know, when I'm, can you still hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Sorry. I, something in my headphones was telling me that it was shutting down. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It's all come down to like, you know, when I was thinking about like, 
one day I'm going to have this, you know, six months from now, I'm going to be at this result or in a year from now, I'm gonna be, you know, whenever I was like living in that future mindset is when I was never really happy because it was always like this ring that I was going to get. And, and then once you get that ring, you move on to the next ring. Like the, the goal just keeps always moving away from you. And as an entrepreneur, that's, that's kind of our job, you know, is, is to grow, uh, you know, for our, for ourselves so that we can provide jobs so that we can solve problems in the world. And so if, if you're destination minded, you're always going to feel a little, a little bit of like loss, a little bit of like uh, fear of missing out because, because that, that goal always moves. So instead you got to get happy with what you're doing. You got to love the process. You got to love what you're doing today. And when you can switch your mindset from thinking about, you know, where you're going to be in six months to thinking about where you are today and loving what you're doing today. That's what's going to, you know, for me anyways, that's where the happiness comes from. And then the comparison thing, like it's good to have aspirations um, to like to see these guys that are farther along than you, but you really shouldn't compare yourself. You know, you can look at them as almost like an entertainment source because they're farther ahead, but you don't want to compare yourself because you can't do what they're doing. You have not yet stepped the steps that they've stepped. That sounds a little weird, but you haven't, you haven't gone through those motions. So you don't yet have the experience and the resources to do what they're doing. You can only do what you can do. And so the best thing is to be, you know, be thinking about the journey you're in, compare yourself to yourself, you know, like look at your own Google analytics, you know, don't look at the screenshots everybody's posting. Look, half of those are Photoshopped anyways. Mm -hmm. The other you know, so look at your own screenshots and, and make that screenshot move. And when you do that, when you fall in love with that of making your own screenshots, that's when you're going to get the happiness and you're going to see your results explode because everybody else is still watching everybody else. But when you watch yourself, when you make your own screenshots, that's when you're going to be the guy sharing the screenshots. Right. So <laughs> that's great. That is awesome. That that is so so true. You know, you reminded me of of a, a friend of mine. Jason had he's a pilot and explained that um, when you're flying a plane, you keep like the little instrument thingy on the horizon. So like mm -hmm. if you're flying through a cloud or something or bad weather, you can't really see, you know, with your eyes. So you have to mm -hmm. trust the instruments. And well, one of the instruments is like you just keep the instrument on the horizon well you know if you're flying a plane that i mean the horizon you never get to the horizon mm -hmm, right you, you, the horizon is, just keeps keeps going right as you keep going in the plane so you run out of gas right so so it's the same thing with what you just said we're, we're we're we keep looking out into the future and we're looking out to the horizon and yet you know we never get there so if if our minds are focused on that out in the horizon then that's a source of being unhappy but if we our focus on now and the journey and the self-reflection and just making ourselves better today. That's so brilliant, man. That's great. What a great answer. Guys, this is Justin Brooke. I'm interviewing here from adskills.com. We sort of switched gears on you right there. We've been talking about advertising and YouTube and traffic and, you know, all those brilliant tips and, you know, intent, you know, with YouTube versus just being reactive, reactive on Facebook, watching cat videos. I mean, it's completely different to go, to YouTube to intent learn something and that's where the gold mine is for you. He set up a whole, you know, step by step system there for you to follow to get some really great results from YouTube. So Justin, hey man, thank you so much for coming on this call with me and spending this quality time with me and letting the listeners get to know you a little bit and, and learn your techniques here. Any any final words before we uh, adjourn and, and say goodbye? No, that's it, man. You know, and, and, and Google me on or, or search me on YouTube too. I got a bunch of videos on there. So thank you for having me on there and thank you for letting me access your audience. Uh, this has been great. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I'm here with Justin Brooke. Make sure you go to adskills.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Out of here. <laughs>